What's going on guys? So we are back here at the fifth wheel, round two of trying to get the sumo springs, which are sitting on the tailgate of my truck right there, installed above the axles on the fifth wheel. Now, if you didn't watch my first video, the challenge we had was the fact that the bolts for the brackets and the brackets themselves wouldn't spread far enough apart to be able to secure them on the top plate above the actual leaf springs and then to slide them in place. So after a quick phone call with the folks over at Sumo Springs, they, uh, they told me what was wrong. They said that their specific setup was designed in conjunction with Lippert axles, not Dexter axles. The plates on the top of these Dexter axles are 3 8 inch thick versus the quarter inch thick plates that are on the top of Lippert axles. So you actually need to separate the plates even further and actually unscrew the top bushing a bit to get it to slide over. So that's what we're gonna do today. And of course, once we get under there and I show you what's going on, you'll have a better idea of what I'm talking about. But this is gonna be an interesting video. Hopefully we can wrap this project up and show you what these things are all about. Again, today's video is only gonna be an installation video simply because we're not planning on taking the RV out today, but I will probably come back and do another video with a camera underneath showing you how they're working when we go on a next trip. So hang tight, I'll be right back. Okay, so this should make things a lot easier to get to. Now, what I want to do is I'm gonna throw in some pads here and then lift it up and then hopefully I can jack everything up by the actual pads here. All right, so I'm gonna actually take some advice that was provided in the comments of the previous video I did attempting this, where somebody said that the best way to do this or the easiest way to do this without having to use jack stands up front to retract all of my leveling legs was to simply have my legs pinned down at a lower position up front, which they currently are. So I could technically retract everything at this point and it's not as if it's gonna drop the nose down too far. And the reason why I didn't do that before and I used jack stands was A, because I didn't think about that, which I should have. But if you recall the Van Lee Beacon that I was doing a six month review on had hydraulic leveling and the hydraulic front landing gear do not have the ability to slide down in a slot so you can get them lower to the ground whenever you're not hitched up. So if I had done that with the Van Lee Beacon and just retracted everything, the front of the fifth wheel would have gone smack down all the way to the ground. So again, this is ground control. This is the electronic version. I completely forgot that you have this adjustability here where you could drop the legs down. That's why I threw jack stands underneath here. So I shouldn't have to worry about anything if I'm gonna be dropping it down or, or retracting all of the legs because these are simply gonna come up and then that one's just gonna drop down maybe an inch, inch and a half whenever it completely retracts. So this should be really easy. Okay, so I'm gonna come up here to my front control panel, go ahead and flip it on and then hit retract all. And the front should drop down. Shouldn't drop down too much though, maybe a couple of inches. It's always kind of scary when you hit retract all. Okay, so the front's down completely now. And I have all of my leveling jacks coming up. These are the middle stabilization jacks and these are the actual rear leveling jacks. So I have a trick this time because I told you all in the previous video that you gotta be careful not to overstroke these jacks, basically not to extend them so far that you get an error code. So I brought something with me today and I want you to check them out. So check these things out. These are made by a company called Mighty and it's spelled M-Y-T-E-E. -E. Got these off of Amazon. So these are an inch and a half thick. These specific ones are 15 inches in diameter. You can get an 18 inch version of them as well. They got handles on them. But the actual working load capacity of these is 50,000 pounds. You heard me right, 50,000 pounds. They're made out of high density polyethylene. They have a 45 degree working load limit of 25,000 pounds and they come in a two pack. The crush rate is 200 PSI. These things are insane. And they're super lightweight too. They feel kind of like plastic pads. They don't have a ton of weight. They're not rubber, so you don't have to worry about them compressing. But yeah, these things are absolutely awesome. They're actually designed to be crane stabilization pads. This is what your outriggers would press down on. Very, very cool. 
and these will give me an extra inch and a half of height so my stabilization legs or my back landing gear legs the auto leveling legs don't have to extend so far so we're going to throw these underneath those and uh, that'll help us use the rear landing gear to lift the back up just about an inch so we'll have the space to put these back in now what i was talking to you about earlier is the fact that you need to get the bracket as wide as possible, but the bracket still won't fit over that 3 8 inch thick plate like this. So you have to loosen this top bushing right here so you can kind of articulate these at an angle. But you have to have the bolt going through, at least through the bottom here, otherwise there'd be no way to install it after the fact. So they sent me a longer bolt kit. We're gonna see if we can get these put on. So the first thing we need to do is get the bolt kit out, get it all prepped up, and then we'll throw these underneath and we'll raise it up. All right, so here are the new bolts. Four inch long carriage bolt versus the three and a half inch long bolt. I'm gonna use the same washer and nut on the end. And this is what I was talking about a little earlier. You have to loosen this top bushing off like that so you can articulate this bracket around the actual plate because the plates are so thick on these Dexter axles. And then I got my Loctite here, so I'll put a drop in here whenever we're ready to start tightening it down. And then I'll also put a drop on the ends of each one of these, even though there's a, a lock washer built onto here. Anyways, we're gonna go ahead and uh, start lifting up the rear end of this RV and uh, get prepped up so we can go ahead and put these in. Okay, so I'm gonna flatten this out a little bit if I can. Put the first one right here, move to the other side, and get the other one on. Okay. All right, now we got both of them in place. I should be able to start lifting. I'll probably have to lift my front landing gear up a little bit. That way it makes kind of the break over height a little bit higher overall and we should be in pretty good shape. Okay, now I'm gonna go into manual mode. Hit enter. I'm gonna go ahead and extend the rear. And what the little flashing lights mean is that because I retracted all the system is showing that it's not level. So that's basically what it's telling me right now. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and extend the rear. And then after I finish lifting the rear up a little bit, I'll go ahead and raise up the front a little bit as well. And we'll see what happens here. And again, these blocks should give me the additional inch and a half of height that I need to raise some of the weight off of the suspension so I can preload those sumo springs. And if you're not sure what I'm talking about, I highly recommend going back and watching the first video so you can kind of see what, uh, what we're doing here today. All right, I think we may have just enough height to go ahead and get these things installed. But it doesn't sound like these jacks are struggling at all at the moment. And I don't want to raise it too high. Again, I don't want to risk overstroking these jack legs. So we're going to get under there. We're going to see if it's high enough to go ahead and install these bushings. Okay, so I'm underneath now. I have my bracket here. First, I'm going to test fit it, see if it even fits. See, because I have to unscrew this portion, it requires me to lift it up a little bit more than I would have to otherwise. I might be okay if I do the rear axle first. Yeah, I might have to do that. Might even just have to lift up the front just a hair just to get a little bit more weight off of these because I can see the, the actual equalizer over there leaning back a little bit, which means I have more room on that side. So let's go ahead and start on that one. Okay, now I should have plenty of clearance on this one. I do. So that's gonna make things a lot easier to start over here. Let me get it off so I can put some thread locker on. Okay, so now I'm just gonna take this, wrap it around the top of the plate here. Can tighten this down a little bit now.
And this lower flange right here on the I-beam is actually three inches thick, so it's gonna make a lot of contact without worrying that it's gonna slip off one side. Okay, so I just loosely tightened it. Let me go ahead and tighten this nut down. There we go. And then just says to tighten the top down now, which it kind of became tight whenever uh, you start tightening that. But got one corner down. It might make sense for me to go ahead and tackle the other side so I don't have to mess with the uh, leveling system at all at this point and just kind of tackle the ones that are available to me. Cool thing is you can see the back side of the disc brake here. Massive Dexter disc brakes. And in case you wanted to see some of the specifications of this axle, 8,000 pound capacity axle. But yeah, that is the axle on this unit, or one of them. Okay, starting on axle number two. Looks like we also have the space we need. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw some Loctite on the thread locks, at least the, whatever brand they provided. cool because they routed the propane line way up here so it doesn't actually interfere with the suspension at all. Okay, so I had to loosen this slightly so I could tighten the top bushing down to uh, make sure these two top plates were flat. Something you don't really see very well when you're tightening it from this angle. All right, so we are in good shape here. It looks like I may be able to get the one up here. I'm gonna give it a shot, but I certainly can't get the one back there. You can see the articulation of the uh, equalizer there, which means that side's much higher or closer to the frame than that side. But yeah, we're gonna see if we can get that one installed and then we'll figure out how to do that one over there. Okay, so I got this one positioned. This one was a bit more of a challenge. I don't have the bolt going through it yet. But I got the Loctite on, I'm ready to start tightening this down. But yeah, this one was a little bit close, so I had to kind of finagle it to get it in there. Then once I get the plate flat on the bottom, we'll be able to run the carriage bolt through. It's hitting the, the actual caliper right now, so I may need to feed it through from this side. It's gonna make it hard to tighten on that side though. So I think the best thing to do here is to loosen it up. This is kind of one of those reasons why I know a lot of people said do all this after you have it in place, but there's really no way to do it after you have it in place, at least conveniently. Okay, so that other bracket's tilted down now, so I'm able to feed this through. There we go. I'm gonna actually tighten it. Again, your specific RV may be a lot easier to do this to, but the challenge I have are these 8,000 pound axles and this really thick top plate. There we go. Okay, we got three down, one to go. Okay, finally down to our last one. Still don't know if it's gonna work just because of how the leaf spring is currently articulated, but. We shall see. I think I might just about have it. Okay. There we go. 
go. Okay, so now I just have to go back to that one, loosen it, and then tighten the bushing down a little bit more because I can see from here that the plates aren't pressed up against each other, so quick little fix. Okay, so I have the camera positioned in a way that I think will pick all this up once I start dropping the fifth wheel. I'm gonna slide out from underneath here and I'm gonna go ahead and I think I can probably auto level it at this point. So I'm gonna retract all first and then I'm gonna auto level it. All right, so there we go. Everything is all leveled out now. It's working the way it's supposed to. Yeah, you gotta lift your suspension up quite a bit. I'm gonna say you're gonna need probably an inch and a half of height, maybe a little bit more. And this is specifically for 8,000 pound Dexter axles because those plates are so much thicker um, because you have to spread the bracket out so much further and you need to unscrew the bushing off the top slightly so you have the clearance you need to properly install them in there. Otherwise, you know, you're just not gonna be able to get them to fit and the brackets won't go around. You could probably use the three and a half inch bolts that came with it. The challenge you're gonna have is assembling it the way the instructions tell you to do it, where you essentially put the whole thing together just loosely and then throw it on because the three and a half inch carriage bolt would have to come out for you to be able to put it back in after you have the bracket in place. I do believe the four inch carriage bolt is definitely the way to go if you have the, uh, the Dexter 8,000 pound axles, simply because it makes the process a little easier. But at the same time, you really do have to get the fifth wheel up quite a bit. And I do wish there was a way to install them so you didn't have to do that. Because my only concern is, you know, I hate to say it, but anytime you have to lift up your RV, it's kind of a scary thing. Because you just never know if something's gonna potentially fail, if you're gonna have an error code with your jacks, if you, you know, if you run into a scenario where you just don't feel comfortable, and I think anytime you have, you know, 16,000-ish pounds resting over you, even a small trailer, you know, the, the idea that something could happen and you could hurt yourself or damage your RV or a combination of both isn't that fun. So, that being said, um, very cool. I hope you like the footage of kind of what it looked like underneath. Give me your feedback as well. How do you guys feel from a comfort level when it comes to getting under your RV while it's lifted up? because you know that's always something that concerns me and I don't know if I'm the only one that feels that way. Anyways guys, I will put a link in the video description if this is something you wanna to add to your RV. There's a lot of folks who have done this upgrade and install and I think by and large, most people really love it. What it does is it adds some dampening to your suspension because those poly foam bushings that are in there aren't the same type of spring rate that your leaf springs are and they act as kind of a cushion or dampening, kind of like an airbag for your springs so they just don't move as freely. Thus, they absorb part of the road jitter, the shock that would normally rattle up through the chassis. And like I always tell my viewers, anytime you can add something to your suspension that can help alleviate some of that harshness, that transfer that goes inside of your RV, even if it's as simple as balancing your tires, right? Balancing your wheels and tires is such an easy one to do. It doesn't require them really doing anything special. and that vibration that you might normally see in a vehicle with unbalanced tires doesn't occur as much inside of your RV. Because we all know 
Stuff can fall down, stuff can fall off and break, cabinet doors can open, things like that can happen. So why not reduce that as much as you can? And that's just what we've done here. I know some folks will say upgrade to like a full independent suspension. You know, every time I've inquired about that with the folks who make the frame, Lippert, even though they carry their own torsion style axle that meets and exceeds the capacity of the RV, they say that fifth wheels just aren't really designed for it unless they're designed that way from the very beginning and most of them aren't simply because you lose equalization and it adds additional stress and some leverage to your frame that they don't recommend. And this is coming directly from the engineers who manufacture the frame. So I'm not making this up. This is something every time I've inquired about it, they've told me the same thing. We do not prefer doing it on fifth wheels that come with leaf sprung suspension. If your RV came with torsion suspension from the factory, well, it was designed that way. The frame was specced for that type of suspension. But if it didn't, that's just what the folks at LCI have warned me about. Anyways, guys, I sure hope you enjoyed this video. If you haven't had a chance, please take a moment, subscribe to my channel, give me a thumbs up, and we'll talk to you again very soon.